Hello, everybody. Welcome to a special edition of Move the Sticks here with the college football season now in the rear view. I think it is officially draft season today. Yep. Can we make that declaration now? Rhett Lewis, Daniel Jeremiah, Bucky Brooks. Guys, this is one of our favorite episodes of Move the Sticks, our 2024 Senior Bowl roster reveal show. Ready to rock and roll. It's the season of hope. And yes. if you're a team that needs to get better, this is an opportunity for you to watch some of the future of the NFL. Well, it's a, it's a great time because so many guys are close to realizing in their dreams this is another step in the process all due respect to our uh, former nfl scouts here but guys the star of the show today <laughs> is undoubtedly the executive director of the reese's senior bowl and a proud michigan alum of course the <laughs> national champion michigan wolverines welcome jim Nagy back with us for another year what's up jim Hey, fellas, how you doing great to, great to be on i uh, really appreciate you guys doing this putting it on the network this year um, excited to be with you guys. Yeah, no doubt, man. And we're excited, too, uh, for the 75th anniversary of yeah. this great game, the Senior Bowl. One of many reasons why we're excited about this game, Jim. What else had you fired up? Well, I would say the biggest thing, Rhett, is we can bring juniors to the Senior Bowl now. So, uh, you know, that that's a big deal. We've been able to bring underclassmen that graduate before our game in years past. Now they open, the league opened it up to, to all these guys. So we've got some really exciting announcements tonight. Uh, I know that we'll get to, and I, I will say this, you know, we usually had our rosters pretty much locked up in the, in the beginning of December in past years. And, and, and what the, the underclassmen has done just made it more of a fluid process. You know, we're still not done with this thing. We're still waiting on some of those juniors um, that played in that national championship game last night to see what shakes out, but uh, really exciting, obviously ramps up the star power of our game, which is, is good for us and, and good for you guys there at the network. So um, all positive stuff. Yeah, no doubt about it. We are fired up uh, for sure. Anything else that has you guys uh, fired up here as we kick hey, off All-Star Game in season? In terms of what we do, quarterbacks are good for business. And this Absolutely. is a good quarterback roster. We're going to jump into that, see all these guys unveiled, who's going to be at this game. Looking yep. forward to that. All right, let's take a look at what Senior Bowl week is going to look like right here on NFL Network. And, of course, also streaming on NFL Plus. Going to kick it off Tuesday through Thursday with the Insiders. And uh, then we get to... Senior Bowl practice with the national team. We'll get the insiders back on then. The American team will be later in the day. And then, of course, each and every day during that week, 8 p.m. Eastern time, the Senior Bowl recap show. And then the big day, game day, 12.30 Eastern time. We kick off the festivities with NFL Total Access. 1 p.m. game time this year for the 75th anniversary of the Senior Bowl. And then we'll wrap it up with Total Access once again at four o'clock. Now though, time to introduce the first player to get a 2024 Senior Bowl invite this year. And it was all done with an element of surprise. I had two texts already from Tajay Spears and from Cam Sample. And they said, you better get that Senior Bowl invite ready for our guy. So uh, that meant a lot to me that teammates think enough about Michael Pratt. So, Michael, come on up, man. The very first recipient of the Senior Bowl invite this year, Mr. Michael Pratt. Yeah! And we got mom. And mom is here, too. <laughs> Well, the Senior Bowl invites are always one of my favorite pieces of this time of year, and it's our pleasure now to welcome in quarterback from the Tulane Green Wave and now headed to the Senior Bowl, Michael Pratt is with us. Mike, thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time. Congrats on getting the invite and heading down to Mobile. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, look, this is probably the most important question that you are going to face <laughs> over the course of the entire few months of your draft prep. I know you're a Florida guy, but you have now spent a good amount of time in mm. New Orleans. You are about to head to Mobile, Alabama in the middle of Mardi Gras, where they claim, of course, to have started Mardi Gras. Yeah. We'll let them have it. But I need you to tell everybody <laughs> that you're going to head back to Mobile, maybe with the decal on the back of your helmet that says New Orleans is still the Mardi Gras king. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. All I know is New Orleans Mardi Gras. Um, and, you know, it's always a great time. So I, I got to say New Orleans is the king of Mardi Gras. There it is. <laughs> Yeah, Michael, I, w I would stay out of that one if I were you with Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, 
they take that pretty seriously down here. I'll say this, guys. I went over there for the week one game where Michael played South Alabama. Uh, he went 14 of 15 with four touchdowns, about 300 yards. And, and again, like I, I shared on that video, left the stadium and had Tajay Spears from last year's game and Cam Sample from a few years ago hit me up. I mean, it was a really easy decision to uh, invite Michael Pratt to this year's game. But, but Michael, can you talk about um, just what you did to that program? Because you got Bucky and and DJ and I were kind of old head scouts. And, you know, back in the day, that used to be a big thing for scouts, you know, getting quarterbacks that lifted a program. And what you guys did last year, we're watching the Cotton Bowl footage. You, you beat Caleb Williams head to head, uh, you and Tajay there. Um, just talk about that, what that meant to you to, to get to Tulane and then leave it a much different place uh, program than when you got there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, just the, the whole process all the way throughout. Um, from being recruited in high school and just stepping in there um, my first day when I early enrolled. Um, just the opportunity, the experience that I had and, you know, moving forward in each year. Um, you know, the first year we went six and seven. Um, the next year was a, a really tough year where we went two and ten. And, uh, you know, we knew we had the tools and the players and it, it was kind of up to us to what we were going to do in the off season. And, um, you know, one thing that I, I've always said about Tulane and I'll always say is just the – level of guys that we had in there character wise work ethic leadership wise um just the people that coach fritz brought into the program made it really easy to buy into what we were doing as well as continue to you know flip the script and um you know translate that into you know what we were doing on the field so after that that really rough two and ten season where there were all, always some some other factors of you know the hurricane and being relocated um, a lot of injuries. Um, it was just a really tough year, but that off season, we kind of, you know, knew what we had to do to be successful, and um, just the way that all the guys stepped up in the leadership roles, like I said, all throughout the off season, and then leading up throughout that whole season, um, and having the success that we did, and continuing that throughout this past year, um, was just something that was super, you know, encouraging for me and everybody else around to see, um, you know, basically just the work that it takes to get to where we wanted to be. And, you know, I'm super happy that I was able to, in my four years, take it from one place and, and leave it where it's at. Oh, Michael, that's great stuff, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you in person for the first time uh, down there in Mobile at the Reese's Senior Bowl. There's a lot that goes into that week. You're going to have meetings. You're going to have practices. It's going to culminate in a game. Now, when it comes to your goals, what you want to get accomplished personally uh, during this entire process, what are you looking forward to? In terms of the Senior Bowl? Yeah. We yeah, um, you know, obviously first there's the on the field stuff, you know, I want to be able to showcase what I'm capable of on the field. Um, but, you know, more than anything, I want to be able to go into that week and, and just learn as much as I can, um, you know, compete. There's going to be a lot of talent there, a lot of really good dudes. Um, so, like I said, just be able to go in there and, you know, learn from everybody else around me, uh, compete, you know, consume knowledge from, you know, not just the other players, but as the coaches, um, and just the amount of experience that I'm going to be in the midst of is a really awesome opportunity and something that I'm really looking forward to. You know, Michael, one of the things that scouts love to ask prospects are, who are some of the guys in the pros that you pat in your game after? Who are some of your, I'll say, quarterback influences when you look at the NFL game on Sunday? Um, I mean, really growing up, I'd, I'm going to be completely honest, I didn't watch a ton of – I was a baseball and basketball player – um, but once I saw, started getting into football more, it was more of Drew Brees and Tom Brady. Um, but, you know, I really love Drew Brees' game just because of his leadership role, um, his toughness, um, you know, battling through adversity, the things that he did on and off the field. And um, the more that I kind of learned about Drew Brees, um, especially from this past year with Coach Rochar, who was our offensive line coach, he was with the Saints for seven years and knew Drew really well. Um, you know, I'd go into Coach Rochar's office and he'd tell me different stories um, all about Drew and just the, the toughness that he had mentally, physically, his leadership roles and how I could apply that to myself and apply that to my game, apply that to the locker room. Um, so I think Drew Brees would be a guy that I would, I would definitely say. Not a bad one, especially sitting there uh, in New Orleans uh, as a former now Tulane Green Wave QB. Hey, Mike, we appreciate you, man. Thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time. Look forward to seeing you down in Mobile. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to it.
All right, we are as well. As you get a look now at the rest of this quarterback group, Michael Pratt actually the only quarterback to start and finish his career at the same institution amongst this group. Mm. Man, is it a good one, though. Joined by a Heisman Trophy finalist in Bo Nix, back throwing it around in the state of Alabama where he began his career at Auburn. Joe Milton, Sam Hartman, Spencer Rattler, all a part of this group. DJ, let's kick it off with a look here at Bo Nix. Yeah, look, Bo Nix to me is the is the top guy at this position coming into the game. I'm looking forward to seeing him there. I think he's got a legit shot being a first-round pick. The question is just pure arm strength. Uh, that's been the knock on him, but in talking to folks that have trained with him and worked with him, they're saying he's out to show everybody uh, that that's not going to be an issue. I I'm excited to see him. Yeah, no question uh, about that. All right, let's get to Sam Hartman uh, here, Jim. Yeah, Sam's a guy, you look at the past year of his life, there was a lot of a lot of tough evaluations coming out of Wake Forest in that offense. So he transfers to Notre Dame, and that thing didn't go as planned either because he, he was going there to play for Tommy Reese. You know, then Tommy Reese ends up going to Alabama. So so it hasn't it hasn't been perfect, you know, and he goes to Notre Dame this year. Yeah, not a great supporting cast. You look what they've done in the portal just in the last few, you know, last few weeks, last month or so to, to support R Riley Leonard from Duke who's coming in. Um, they needed some pieces. So, you know, it, it made a cleaner evaluation for the scouts to see him more in more of a pro style offense, which is great. Uh, but this is a big week for Sam and he knows that. Uh, played a ton of football, cleaned up a lot of things this year. Uh, so excited to get Sam. Excited to get Sam in the game and, and see what he can do with a lot of really good people around him. Look, man, really good player. Came from Wake Forest, ended up in Notre Dame, thrived. And we talked about all these quarterbacks that we're seeing bouncing around. How about Spencer Rattler going from Oklahoma to South Carolina, having an opportunity to really showcase his game down into SEC. This is a guy that was a, look, a prize recruit coming out of Arizona. He goes to Oklahoma, we see some of the talent, doesn't go his way, has to bounce back. And I think the thing that will help him along the way is having to go through the adversity. You can see the arm talent, you can see how he's grown in terms of dealing with the adversity. This would be a great week for him to remind people how talented and how coveted he was as a prospect coming out of high school. All right, let's get to Joe Milton from Tennessee. You want to talk about a rocket launcher with a million dollar smile, and uh, that's what you got here in the Volunteer QB. 20 passing touchdowns, five picks uh, this past year. Took care of the ball. Saw him this summer down at the Manny Passing Academy. He was wearing socks that said, I'm expensive. And when you look at the tools, it's hard to argue. <laughs> Saw him make a throw from the minus 25 right hash mark and went all the way to the back left corner of the opposite end zone. That's 93 yards in the air, folks, if you're keeping track uh, at home. Got all the tools and will be must-see TV on NFL Network and NFL Plus down in Mobile. Let's take a look now at the running backs headed to Mobile, and it is a terrific group uh, once again. Give us our first look at underclassmen into the game here at this position. Rasheen Ali from Marshall and Jalen Wright from Tennessee. Uh, DJ, glad to see Kamani Vidal done at Troy after his five touchdown performance against that. Yeah, that was a tough one. Uh, okay. I feel like every year we're talking about somebody who's yeah. had a big game against us, yeah. and that's the one for this year. Indeed, that was a fun one to watch, and uh, you're not the only school. Glad to see uh, Kamani Vidal out of the Sun Belt Conference. But let's kick this off, Jim, with another terrifically productive player at the FCS level. Yeah, Dylan Lobby from New Hampshire. Uh, really a cool player, guys. He, he led the FCS in all-purpose yards this year. And again, you always look at the smaller school guys in the playoff game and what he did against Central Michigan. We're just going to see footage here. 12 catches for an NCAA record 295 yards from a for a running back. I mean, this guy caught 68 balls this year at New Hampshire. And, he's, and it's not like they're just throwing him swings and balls in the flat. I mean, he can legitimately detach and run routes out of the slot. He's really good at the top of a route. So he's really, he's the guy that every team is looking for that gives them that versatility in the pass game. I've heard some Christian McCaffrey stuff with, with Dylan. I'm not going to do that to him. Way too long. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to anyone. Um, but the guy, the, the guy he does remind me of, fellas, is uh, Danny Woodhead, the former Patriots running back. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this guy's kind of a do-it-all player. He can return punts. He can return kicks. Uh, and really a cool, cool guy in the pass game. We, we could legitimately move him to the wide, wide receiver group during the week if we had a player go down. And he could, he could get us through the week as a slot receiver for sure. Yeah, excited to watch him. Another one I'm looking forward to, Marshawn Lloyd uh, from USC, who transferred from the other USC. Again, that's kind of the theme uh, we see in college football right now. These guys change in places. 
But the production was outstanding for the Trojans. Think about that offense. Caleb Williams throwing the ball over the field. He averaged over seven yards a carry. Got nine touchdowns second year in a row. Uh, he pulled that off. Want to see him get more involved in the passing game? I think he can catch the ball. I think he's got natural hands. Just didn't have as many opportunities uh, last year. You see it right there. He can really frame the ball and catch it. So this will be a big week for him in the one-on-ones, pass pro and receiving. I know this dude can run the rock. Look, he absolutely can run the rock. And one of the guys I'm excited to watch, uh, how about Ray Davis from Kentucky? This is a guy who was a three-time transfer, made his way to Kentucky by way of Vanderbilt, then uh, Temple. But this is a guy back-to-back 1,000-yard -back season, did it at two different institutions, does a great job of getting down here, love the vision, love the ability to get into those holes on jump cuts and various things. And he also can catch the ball out of the backfield. Really talented player that I'm looking forward to watching. Let's talk about one of the underclassmen, Rasheen Ali from Marshall. Six foot, over 200 pounds, bigger back, but he's got some of that speed to break down angles, which you see on tape a whole bunch. Toolbox is full in the run game and the pass game. He does have some explosive speed. They split him out wide and they'll throw it to him in empty right now and then watch him Go make guys miss. Favorite play, though, comes from the ECU game. He beats a free hitter in the hole, then gets contacted by two guys at the five-yard line and keeps the legs firing and fights his way all the way through to the end zone. Um, and a big-time uh, production type of guy there at the running back spot uh, for the Thundering Herd. All right, that's a look at the running backs coming up. We're going to take a look at the pass catchers for the wide receiver group headed down to Mobile. Uh, which, uh, which receiver are the Rams going to draft that's going to turn into one of the best <laughs> in the league from Cooper Cup to Puka Nakua? We're going to give you the next group of stars down in Mobile when we come back. All right, back here with you on the Move the Sticks Senior Bowl roster reveal show. BYU standout Puka Nakua, a participant in last year's Senior Bowl. Puka, of course, uh, on to get drafted by the Rams in the fifth round. And, well, all he's done is set a couple of NFL rookie records for both receptions and receiving yards. Terrific rookie campaign for the Rams. Puka Nakua and we'll have a say in how things go in the postseason as well. Let's take a look at the other wide receivers now headed to the Senior Bowl. Michael Pratt's favorite target, like we just talked to uh, at the top of the show from Tulane, Jaquan Jackson will be there. And NFL MVP candidate Christian McCaffrey will get to watch one of his younger brothers put on a show in Mobile. Rice's Luke McCaffrey, part of a talented wide receiver group. So maybe you can pull out that Christian McCaffrey comp yet here, Jim. Uh, UNC fans wishing they saw more of Tez Walker in Chapel Hill should tune into the Senior Bowl to watch his talents on display. If you're into big framed wideouts, look no further than the six foot seven Johnny Wilson from Florida State. And our first national champion revealed on the roster, Roman Wilson from Michigan. All right, Jim, let's start this thing though with Xavier Leggett from South Carolina. What do you like there? Xavier was our, our highest mover on the offensive side of the ball this year. You're talking about a guy that was, was really a kick returner and special teams player coming into the year. Last year, he had 167 yards total. He had 178 in the opening game against North Carolina this year. So six foot one receiver, 220 pounds, going to run in the four threes. Uh, just had a monster year. Big mover. Uh, excited to see him down here. He's going to have a huge week. So I'm loving another SEC player, Ricky Purcell from Florida. This is a guy that started at Arizona State for three years. Makes his way down to Gator Country, and he is fantastic. Woo! as a route runner, one of the cleanest route runners that you'll find in a slot. Did a really good job of creating separation. And when you get the ball in his hands, he has some magic to him. I think this is one of the best slot receivers that you're going to see at the game. All right, I'm going to give you the guy who I think is going to end up being the highest drafted of this group. And I think is going to have a big opportunity to climb up the ladder, and that's Devontae Walker. He's a transfer from Kent State. Remember the big fight with the NCAA? I do. Wasn't eligible mm -hmm. uh, for the majority of the early portion of the season. And then as soon as he got into the lineup, he just took off. Average 17 yards a catch. You see the numbers there on the screen. He's big, he's fluid, he's fast. He just didn't have the uh, the resume because yeah. oh, it's inability to play. He's going to put on a show in Mobile, I'm convinced of. All right, so I talked about the rocket launcher earlier, Joe Milton yeah. from mm. Tennessee. Here's your rocket, Jamari, Jamari Thrash from Louisville, uh, transferred in there, and he has speed to burn, fluid on double moves, uh, really had the explosives going the first half of the season. Ten of his 14 chunk plays on the year came in the first five games, just four in the final eight, so excited to see what he brings to Mobile. 
Okay, so from the wide receivers, let's now go to the tight ends where the Big Ten is well represented. Michigan's A.J. Barner, Theo Johnson from Penn State, and Brevin Spanford from Minnesota will all be there. Uh, while Jaheim Bell was one of the big transfer portal additions to the Florida State squad this past season coming in from South Carolina. And then Ben Sinat, one of a number of Kansas State Wildcats to get an invite. And Jim brought the surprise with him on this one. took a heck of a chance when he came down here as a walk-on and um, there's some great stories of guys that walked on and then got a chance to play in the Senior Bowl. We're fortunate that you're going to come to Mobile and have that be part of your NFL journey. Yeah. But some of our core values are things like grit and hustle, integrity, humility, and you represent all those things. We'd like to officially you know, present you a uh, invitation to play in, yeah. in the Senior Bowl. Thank you, I love you guys. This is awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, really cool there watching Ben. One of the great things about the Senior Bowl every year is the stories that come out of the, out of the game. And we're talking about a guy here out of high school that didn't have a single FBS offer. He was more of a hockey player in high school, actually. Uh, had a partial to an FCS school. Goes to Kansas State as a walk-on. He and his dad, his dad had a relationship with the head coach there, Chris Kleiman. They, I think they grew up in the same town. Um, and he was the pass game at Kansas State this year. You, the guy had 49 catches, 676 yards, and six touchdowns. Didn't have like a lot of NFL skill people drawing coverage away from him. He was the guy. So uh, really excited to, ben, to get Ben down. I'll tell you what, the transfer portal has me all messed up. I'm watching Ohio <laughs> State's quarterback there for Kansas State <laughs> right. uh, throwing the ball around. Uh, I'll keep it going here. Let's go Theo Johnson. From Penn State, he was in a crowded tight end room yep. there at Penn State. It's a loaded group. Didn't see a ton of balls. You see the production on there. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't really jump off the screen, but he's big. 6'6", uh, 260 pounds. You can see here he can run as all Penn State guys can. We see it at the combine every year. Looking forward to watching him in Mobile. Look, another guy that's a pass catching tight end. How about Jared Wiley from TCU? Over the last two years, 71 receptions, 765 yards, 12 touchdowns. This is a league that has become a matchup league where you're looking for guys that can get busy over the middle of the field. He is one of those guys that can come in and make an impact right away. A.J. Barner from Michigan started his career as a big play threat at the tight end spot. My alma mater there at Indiana showed a willingness to get dirty in the run game late in his career for the Hoosiers. That was a big piece, I feel like, of his transfer to Michigan. Knew how they used tight ends there. Thought that'd be a big piece of his development and eventual progression to the league. I think there's still some work to do there, but I think partly because of Colston Loveland, partly because of the way that they like to play uh, in Ann Arbor, there's untapped potential in the pass game that we didn't really get to see this year for A.J. Barner. Good on you for getting over that and giving him some love. Nice. <laughs> Congratulations, A.J. Barner, on your national title. Still to come, we're talking about the big boys in the trenches. We're going to reveal the offensive linemen that you're going to see try to hold their own in those one-on-one -on -one pass rush drills and more when we come back. The Senior Bowl roster reveal continues here on Move the Sticks as we take a look at the offensive linemen starting here with the tackles. You remember the Sooners sent Wanya Morris to Mobile last year from the offensive line room. Tyler Guyton gets the call this year for OU. Talisa Fuaga with plenty of intrigue from Oregon State. How about Ladarius Henderson transferred into Michigan and becomes one of two Wolverines along their national champion offensive line to head down to Mobile. And Jordan Morgan, big piece to Jed Fish's tremendous season in Tucson with the Wildcats will be there as well. But DJ, let's take a closer look at Fuaga from Oregon State. Yeah, I'm just going back through my notes on him. I love this player. Yeah. One of my favorites mm -hmm. in the draft. And when you have the word nasty and then exclamation point, exclamation point, <laughs> exclamation point, like he sends that message with his Did we play. find our Alex Kappa? He, 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 well, yeah, he's, they, there will be guys on the ground, and it will not be him unless he's on top of them. He is a big, powerful man, yeah. one of my favorites. Again, uh, I think he could, some people think he's going to be a guard. I think he can hold up a tackle. I think he'll be just fine out there. He's got an immediate anchor because of how strong and powerful he is. And in the run game, again, he'll move you, and he will finish you. Well, DJ, I, I agree with you there on Fuaga. I can't wait to see him. The, the guy I would like to talk about is Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma. You brought up Wanye Morris in the game last year. They also had Anton Harrison, who went in the first round of the Jags. And, and Tyler sat behind those guys for the most part. You know, we're all talking about, you, you know, Joe Alt from Notre Dame right now and Olu Fashana from Penn State. And we should be. They're very good players. Take nothing away from those guys. 
But if you're talking about the highest ceiling offensive tackle in this class, I believe it's Tyler Guyton. This guy absolutely floats on a football field. Um, watching this guy in one-on-one -on -one pass pro is going to be a lot of fun. To me, if you talk about guys that are going to move, maybe be, be the, we saw Darnell Wright do it last year, move from being a mid-second round pick to the 10th overall pick. Talk about the biggest movers. I think it could be Tyler Guyton this year. Color me intrigued, Jim. Be following Tyler Guyton's progress during the week uh, in Mobile. Let's move to the interior, guys. Illinois' Isaiah Adams, another Brett Bielema product along the offensive line. How about Washington's Troy Fatanu is in the game from the Huskies' Joe Moore award-winning offensive line. We got two underclassmen as of now along the interior O-line group, and both among uh, the interior group there are Oregon's Jackson Powers Johnson and BYU's Kingsley uh, Sumataya, Charles Turner the third from LSU protecting and clearing the way for Heisman Trophy winner Jaden Daniels all year long uh, as well. But, Bucky, let's talk a bit about Christian Haynes here. Yeah, Christian Haynes had an opportunity to play under Jim Moore, and so you know he got pro coaching. What I love about him is, look, he's a fifth-year player who has slowly and steadily developed throughout his time at UConn and when you're looking for players on the inside can they anchor can they play with toughness do they have a little nastiness are they athletic enough to do some of the things when it comes to finishing he has that potential doesn't always show up but this is a very very solid prospect he's intriguing I can't wait to see him physical tough and gritty Trevor Keegan is Michigan one of the foundational pieces of a recruiting class that turned this program back into a contender and now a winner guarantee you he is going to score big in the interviews other guards will get taken in front of him once we get to Detroit with the NFL draft but guarantee the coaching staff and locker room he goes into is going to love him he's a I got your back dude a follow me dude and I'm a fan of Trevor Trevor Keegan and looking forward to seeing him uh, in Mobile uh, okay if you're an offensive lineman or if you're a fan of the offensive line group and you're wondering what that experience is like well who better to tell you about it than a senior bowl hall of famer Lane Johnson. I feel like, uh, you know, having the opportunity to come from Oklahoma and compete against the schools in the SEC and guys, uh, you know, compete for national championships every year. I feel like that uh, did a lot for the evaluators, for the scouts. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, I, th I feel like it helped my confidence. But, yeah, it was just a, a good day for uh, to get out there and play some football and really wrap up your collegiate, you know, um, time up uh, the right way. But really just getting to compete against a wide variety of opponents was really what it was all about. And that's awesome. Lane, part of a, another terrific Senior Bowl Hall of Fame class that went in uh, down at Point Clear this summer. Okay, still to come here, we shift the focus to the defensive side of the ball and reveal some of the edge rushers getting after quarterbacks, including one of the very best in this draft class. And we'll have a chat with Liatu Latu from UCLA. All right, back here with you on the Move the Sticks Senior Bowl roster reveal show, taking a look at the first group uh, of players from the defensive side of the ball. As we look at defensive ends, Chris Braswell from Alabama, one half of a dominant edge duo for the Tide this year. Ole Miss's Cedric Johnson, 19 sacks to his credit during an impressive career in Oxford, but perhaps one of the best stories of perseverance and production on this entire roster comes from UCLA's Leatu Latu, who we have the pleasure of welcoming into the show uh, here. Uh, Leatu, thanks so much for being with us. Rhett Lewis, Daniel Jeremiah, Bucky Brooks, and of course you know Jim Nagy uh, with us. And look, I've got to get your description of what this journey was like for you, starting your career at Washington, then going through the, the medical issues that forced you to step away from the game, and now back as one of the most productive edge rushers the last couple of years. What's that been like for you? I mean, through the grace of God, I was able to, you know, accomplish a lot of stuff. And through my family, you know, they've been able to support me throughout it all. And it's just been a lot of ups and downs. And, you know, it's been an emotional roller coaster. But I have to thank UW for, you know, everything that they've done for me, supporting me. And uh, they were continuously helping me out and, you know, looking out for what's best for me. But, you know, it wasn't able to go my way. I mean, I was medically retired and able to find a home in UCLA and I had to thank coach Kelly and the rest of the UCLA program for, you know, taking a chance on me because they didn't know what I was capable of. I just had to go out there and prove it. And, you know, I, I think I did that to the best of my ability and, you know, here I am. I ought to, there's, there's going to be a lot of teams in this draft cycle looking for pass rush production out of this draft. And to me, you're that guy. Um, you're that guy that's going to be able to step in right away. You're so much fun to watch because you know how to rush the passer. Unlike a lot of these college guys that are just 
depending uh, depending on their tools to get it done you really know how to do it you've got a skill you've got a craft can you just can you just talk about that and really where that came from man because you rush like a guy that's been in the league 10 years well really i have to uh give my credit to the old heads back at UW, like Joe Tryon, uh, Levon Wizard, Josiah Bronson, Ryan Bowman. I mean, those guys have taught me a lot and, um, you know, how to rush on the field, really. And I really like to emulate my game off of NFL players like Max Crosby, who has a relentless tenacity. And, you know, I think I'm, I'm able, you know, I'm a visual learner, so I think I can put that on the field. And, you know, I, I'm just going out there and doing what God blessed me with. Yeah, I'm curious what you're looking forward to in the one-on-ones the most. You know, is there something, I mean, I got a chance to study you and watch you. You're so good with your hands. You can really bend. You can finish. Is there is there an aspect of your game that you think might be underappreciated you're looking to show off once we get to the one-on-ones? Shoot. Um, nothing that I'm concerned with. I just really want to show out and um, – prove that I can really use multiple moves at a time and, you know, my feet are never going to stop. You know, I always have something something else to, you know, uh, combat, like the, the tackle with or the guard or whoever I'm going up against. You know, I always have another move in my mind that, you know, I'm going to hit. You know, and thinking about being able to bring that, you talked about looking at Max Crosby, but you had a defense coordinator, Coach Lynn, that came from the pros. What were you able to learn as he was able to kind of implement a different type of scheme that allowed you to have a lot of success? Really, I was able to just learn how the DBs work uh, in the back behind us and how much time they need and really just where to fit off of uh, our inside backers as well. I mean, Coach Lynn, you know, loved having him as a coach. He's such a great person, too. And, you know, he didn't really manage the D-line as much. You know, we were able to go out there and be ourselves. And, you know, we didn't have too much stunts. We were just able to go out, out there, be free and uh you know, my guy Carl Jones was there behind us as a spy. So we had we always had a two way go, whatever it was, just to get to the quarterback. Well, yeah, too. It's uh, going to be a lot of fun to watch you down in Mobile. We certainly appreciate you giving us a few, a few minutes here on the Senior Bowl roster reveal show, and can't wait to see you when you get down to the Senior Bowl. Thank you guys very much. I'm excited. All right, let's take a closer look now at some of the big guys along the defensive line, some of the defensive tackles, one that features Dwayne Carter, first player in Duke football program history to be named a captain three times. Tyler Ooh. Davis, one of the most prolific D linemen in Clemson program history. Could have gone to the league last year, but came back and now will play in the Senior Bowl. They say everything's bigger in Texas, uh, mm. including the impact from a pair of Longhorn D linemen here, Byron Murphy and Tavondre Sweat ready to wreak havoc on opposing offensive linemen. Jim, let's start by taking a closer look at the underclassman, Byron Murphy. Yeah, Byron's a guy I think has a chance to help himself as much as anyone in the game. And he's easy to like on tape, there's no question. Uh, but he's a little undersized. And this was his first year where he really had some pass rush production. I think coming into the year, he just had a couple sacks. He had five this year. Um, but again, this is a guy that's gonna eat in the one-on-ones. We just got done talking to a guy uh, Layatu Latu, who's who's gonna got a big bag of tricks, and Murphy's a guy on in the inside that's gonna be hard to handle uh, for these guards and centers. And it, it, to me, the comp here is Grady Jarrett. Um, you know, that's who I saw. I've heard some guys in the league already use that comparison. Just a really, really fun player. Um, and I know DJ is gonna talk about his teammate, who's a much different player. But excited to get Byron down here. Yeah, I'm with you on Byron. That's an interesting comp there. I wrote that one down on my paper mm -hmm. as well yeah. as Odigazua, who we've seen oh, do totally. a nice job with the Cowboys. Just really quick. Uh, big time, dude. Uh, his teammate, you mentioned it, different guys, Jim. Uh, Sweat is a big uh, 340 plus. You know, we know he can sit there and hold the point. We know he can clog run lanes. You know, what kind of pass rush can he get? You know, can he push the pocket? Can he flash some of this quickness? You see flashes of it, but you want to see a little bit more pass rush. He's got a lot, uh, a lot of ground to gain. He has a lot of upside. If he can show during this week at the Reese's Senior Bowl that he can add that pass rush to what we already know is a dominant run defender. Longhorns well represented on the defensive side of the ball. And coming up, we're going to take a closer look at the position players on the defensive side of the ball from the linebacker and defensive back group. Guys ready to make some plays down in Mobile on the way when we come back here on the Move the Sticks Senior Bowl Roster Reveal Show. Yeah. <laughs> 
I was actually here in Houston in August and purposely didn't come by to see y'all because I knew I was planning on doing this. Without further ado, we'd like to officially announce you. Here's your official invite to this year's Risa Senior Bowl. We've got your limited edition cash. <laughs> Jayless, congratulations. Couldn't be more excited for you, man. The draft starts in Mobile. How oh, cool! And if you love the Senior Bowl like we do, you know the over 200 years of scouting experience that helped find the players for this game, led by Jim Nagy, will find players anywhere and everywhere. And this year, for the first time, a Houston Christian Husky is headed to Mobile with Jalex Hunt. That is super cool. Take a look at some of the off-the-ball backers here. Michael Barrett, former high school quarterback turned linebacker for the national champion Michigan Wolverines, uh, is in the game. Buck, we got another Tar Heel there with yeah. Cedric Gray among the group of linebackers. And take a closer look at some of the other guys uh, looking to make some big-time plays down in Mobile. Trevin Wallace and James Williams, two underclassmen from this group. Of course, underclassmen, again, for the first time uh, allowed into the Senior Bowl, which is uh, super cool. Big-time playmakers uh, on their way down to Mobile. But, Jim, let's take a closer look at Peyton Wilson from North Carolina State. There's three ways to get to the, to the, to the football on defense, right? You got instincts, speed, and motor. Peyton Wilson has all three. I mean, this guy's got all three. He's got that overachiever play style, and he's going to run 4-4. So, you know, stat sheet filling players. I mean, look at this guy this year. 138 total tackles, 17 and a half tackles for loss, six sacks, three interceptions, six passes defense, and two fumble recoveries. So, you know, the medicals are going to be big for Peyton. I think that's that's well publicized. Uh, but, man, what a football player. and What a year he had this year. Uh, we've been watching this guy for like three years now, so excited to finally get him to Mobile. Yeah, you mentioned the medical stuff, Jim. To me, this would have been easy for him to duck this event and say, you know what, I'm just going to get healthy. I know I'm going to run fast. Let's get to the combine. Uh, but showing you he's willing to get out there, willing to compete, and one that, as you mentioned, the, the speed jumps off the screen. Excited to see him in person. No, this is a heartbreaker. This guy grew up right in Chapel Hill <laughs> yep. and didn't go to Chapel Hill. But he's an outstanding player. He was a great high school player. continued <laughs> yes. on at NC State. But I'm going to talk about Atar Hill, such a great who also has good instincts, good awareness, did a really good job steadying this defense and plays a variety of, the, of, of roles there. You see 11 tackles were lost, five sacks, did a really good job kind of controlling the interior of that defense. This is a really good player. Excited to see him play. All right, let's get to the cornerbacks in the game this year. And no surprise to see the Penn State tradition of putting out big time cornerbacks continues with a pair of corners Headed to Mobile and Johnny Dixon and the underclassman Kalen King. How about a little legacy uh, here from Rutgers? Bo Melton, wide receiver, starring now for the Packers, played in the game. Now his brother on the opposite side of the ball, Max Melton, uh, will be there. I've uh, got some uh, big-time playmakers here in this group as well. Josh Newton from TCU. Quincy Riley, uh, playmaker from the Louisville Cardinals, uh, among those headed down to Mobile. DJ, let's take a look at Quinion Mitchell here. Yeah, look, I think he's one of the you know top corners in the entire draft class. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing him down there. He timed in the spring and was officially timed at a 4.39. I'm told he's going to run even faster than that once we get to the combine. And his pro that. So size, <laughs> speed, but to me, it's the physicality and the competitiveness uh, that pushes him way up the board. He'll, he'll be talked about. He'll, he'll be a definite buzz guy as we get down and go through the week in Mobile. You know, Kalen King's the guy for me from Penn State. Uh, you, you talked about him, Red, in, in yeah. the Penn State connection. This is a guy that if you go back to 2022 tape, there's some really good stuff on there. He, he kind of got the attention of the NFL um, as a sophomore when they were all going there to watch Joey Porter, who we all know went in the first round last year to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They, you know, didn't have quite the year this year. So he's coming down here with a real prove it mentality to Mobile. You know, he was talked about in first round mock drafts over the summer. Uh, maybe didn't play up to that this year, but he's he's coming down here with a business mindset, and I can't wait to see him. This guy's a really good athlete, has natural cover skills. Yeah, I'm into that uh, as well, but I want to talk about a guy who's a leader, a playmaker, and I got to have him on my team, and it's Mikey Sainra still from the Michigan Wolverines. Had the game-sealing interception and the national title game win over Washington. 
First two years as a receiver there in Ann Arbor, then makes a seamless transition to the slot corner where he becomes one of the best in the country, an extremely skilled blitzer, a ball hawk. Saw that on the interception return. He's a threat with the ball in his hands. Maybe a bit undersized, but you know what? So was Tyron Matthew, He's too. He's a great right? tackler. Right? He is a winner, and I predict he'll be a team captain wherever he lands within the first two years uh, there. So a big-time player there in Mikey Sainra still. Let's take a look at some of the safeties now to close out this defensive back group. We've got a number of underclassmen here. Javon Bullard, a uh, big-time dude from Georgia. Cole Bishop uh, from Utah. Bo Braid, a uh, definite playmaker mm -hmm. in the secondary for the Maryland Terrapins. And Malik Mustafa. Uh, from Wake Forest. Of course, we were big fans of Jesse Bates, who yep. was a uh, terrific safety for the Demon Deacons as well. And looking at some of the other safeties headed down there as well, Josh Proctor from Ohio State, Jalen Simpson uh, from Auburn. But let's start here, Bucky, uh, by taking a look at what the Maryland Terp is going to bring to the table. Well, DJ, I tell you, sometimes yeah. you're not supposed to scout the helmet, but when Maryland <laughs> keeps producing DBs year after year after year, you got to take Savage, them seriously. Maryland, I mean, yeah. you've just seen so many guys come out of that program and have success, and Braid is another one that should do that. 6'1", 210 pounds. You see him flying all over the field. This is a really good player with great instincts and awareness. He'll hit, and as we're seeing in this league, you got to be able to tackle. If you get your hands on the ball, it gives you a chance. Maryland has produced him time and time again. Love it. Uh, yeah, Jacorian Bennett uh, went in uh, this year, and then, of course, uh, Deontay Banks. Yes. From the New York Giants, a first-round pick uh, there from Maryland. So they've had some terrific secondary players uh, there coming out of College Park, Maryland. Still to come here on the Move the Sticks Senior Bowl roster reveal show. Uh, we'll look ahead to what we're excited about down in the Senior Bowl week in Mobile and take a look back at some of the big-time players as well when we return. Is this food-related or football-related? Uh, either one. Okay. All right, back here wrapping up the Move the Stick Senior Bowl roster reveal show with a look at the specialists heading down to Mobile. And special is definitely one way to describe Iowa punter Tory Taylor. Not often a punter is the most popular guy on the team, but that was the case there for the Hawkeyes this year. Jim, I know you're hoping that the offenses are a little bit more productive than they were in Iowa City this year. You don't see Tory that much. Yeah, he, 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 got a, he got his work in in Iowa City, there's no <laughs> doubt. And then the other guy we talked about there is Will Riker from Alabama, the all-time leading scorer in NCAA history. That's not a bad title to have, yeah, no, right? Put uh, that to on put the on your, card. on your draft yeah. resume, for sure. And uh, Jim, look, we love doing this show here with you. We love talking about this game and this roster and a special one this year with this being the 75th anniversary. I know you got a lot up your sleeve. Yeah, very excited to bring all the legends back down to Mobile from our 75th anniversary team. That'll be great. Uh, ushering in a new era of the Senior Bowl this year with the juniors. I, I appreciate all these underclassmen that have, have bought into this opportunity to come down and show themselves in, in front of all the NFL teams and you guys. And, and lastly, I just want to say thank you to the NFL Network, all you guys, uh, for putting us on TV this year on the network, which is great. Um, and thank you guys for being so supportive of the game. Oh, we love it. Can I say two things real quick? Yes. If you have a chance to get there for the week or for the game, do it. It's mm -hmm. a football bucket list to go to the Senior Bowl. And the second thing is, uh, am I going to get that trucker hat, Nagy? I've been wanting that Senior Bowl <laughs> trucker hat for three years now. I'm waiting for this thing. Come on. We help a guy We got, we got you. Okay. We got okay. you. There we go. We're good. Definitely uh, definitely send us some of those, uh, some of the Reese's, uh, mm -hmm. Reese's pieces. We're going to need a few of those uh, in studio <laughs> yeah. for those of us that unfortunately won't be able to make it down to Mobile. But I'm telling you, that atmosphere on game day. Oh, it's awesome. We want to talk better. about the practice week, which is is phenomenal but that atmosphere on game day is special uh, down there at Hancock Whitney Stadium on the campus of South Alabama super cool uh, way to take in the game and uh, this the 75th anniversary so Jim thanks again uh, for being with us and again here's a look at how you can catch all of the Senior Bowl festivities here on NFL Network and also streaming on NFL Plus the insiders will kick things off Tuesday through Thursday each and every day at 10 a.m. Eastern time we'll be with both the national and American teams for practice. And then we wrap it all up with the Senior Bowl recap show uh, those three days at eight o'clock. And then on game day, it all starts with NFL Total Access at 1230. Game kicks off this year at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And then we'll wrap it up with NFL Total Access once again post game uh, at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Thanks again, everybody, for being with us. For Jim Nagy, Bucky Brooks, Daniel Jeremiah, I'm Rhett Lewis, our hardworking crew. We appreciate you and we'll see you in Mobile.